welcome back. In this segment, I will talk about a safe prime generation algorithm. The idea of this algorithm is to extend the previous algorithm we talked about in the previous segment. Uh, if you quickly recall the previous segment, um, we first generated a number Q, checked whether is Q is congruent to two mod three. If it is, then we go ahead and generate P and check whether P is also congruent to two mod three, okay? If that relationship is not true, then we go ahead and generate a new Q and keep trying until uh, we find it. You probably notice that we are only using uh, P mod three and Q mod three. So his idea is to not only look at number three um, for the modular operation, look at a sequence of primes. Okay, in, in his paper, he proposes the idea that why can't we have a small list of primes, say for example, using Siva Ferestonsonus, and use that uh, to generate safe primes quicker. And, and uh, I will explain the algorithm now, okay? The core of the algorithm is as follows. We first actually generate um, a number Q, right? And to check whether uh, Q mod R is not congruent to R1, R minus one by two mod R, okay? Uh, let me put R equal to three so you can connect back to the previous segment. If R is three, uh, what do we expect Q mod three to be? We expect Q mod three to be two uh, for Q to be a candidate for the, as part of the safe prime generation algorithm. Okay, we can put R equal to three, three minus one is two, two by two is uh, one. Okay, one not equal to two, that's perfectly fine. So we can go ahead and keep that Q uh, for our candidate, okay. Uh, so in this paper, he generalized that idea and uh, he considers a sequence of primes, okay, where is this number R coming from? You could say uh, R is a set of primes from one through two power 15, for example, or two power 16, something like that, small list of primes, okay. So why is this an important condition? Why should uh, P being a safe prime imply that Q mod R must not be congruent to R, min R minus one by two mod R? So uh, it's a simple exercise. He didn't prove it on the papers, but I am elaborating it. It's not so complicated. I use proof by contradiction. If Q mod R is R minus one by two mod R, uh, you could say uh, this is nothing but uh, Q is equal to K times R plus R minus one by two, just the definition of mod, which means P is two times Q plus one, which is equal to, I just substitute the Q is K times R plus R minus one by two. And I show that R divides P, which is a contradiction because no number divides P. And of course, R is not one and R is not P. And therefore, uh, we can conclude that, um, the number, um, we can conclude that our assumption is wrong, okay? The assumption that Q mod R is equal to R minus one by two is clearly wrong. Um, therefore, we can say that when, uh, um, when P is a safe prime, the Q mod R cannot be congruent to R minus one by two mod R. That is basically the, uh, the reasoning behind this proof, okay? So let's look at the, um, run and compare how fast this is in comparison to the previous algorithm we talked about. Okay, so let's try this with Wiener. Yeah, you see, it was fairly quick. Uh, we can try, uh, this is again quick, this is Wiener algorithm. With this, it becomes a little slower now. Okay, I hope that convinces you to that, that uh, the Wiener algorithm that we just discussed is much faster than a regular safe prime algorithm. Let me explain the algorithm now. Um, the random safe prime Wiener takes a couple of um, arguments. Uh, the B is the bit size of your prime P and the primes is the list of primes you have from Siva Ferestonus, for example. And then um, these, are all, these arguments are related to miller robbins which we discussed earlier. First, it goes ahead and generates a random B minus one bit um, odd number and checks whether, uh, you know, uh, the number uh, uh, satisfies the property that we talked about, right? That uh, Q mod R uh, is congruent to um, R minus one by two. This is R minus one by two mod R. If that is true, okay, uh, remember, uh, yeah, we don't we we want this to be not equal. Okay, if it is equal, that means uh, uh, we have to try uh, something else. Okay, so that means it will continue the loop and uh, select another Q, increment the Q by two. First, it selects a Q, checks whether um, 
q mod r is congruent to r minus 1 by 2 mod r okay if it is then it will say um, the the uh, the the q that you're dealing with is not a good q right so it will go ahead and break this uh, for loop which means um, it will go ahead and incre increase the size of the q by 2 that means it's going to try q plus 2 and the continuous q plus 4 and so on until it finds a q that um, that violates this property, okay? Um, Q should not be a multiple of R, Q should not be a multiple of R minus one by two. And, um, and yeah, we talked about the property, so okay. And then it goes ahead and checks whether um, P uh, is congruent to two mod three. This is something that we talked about in the previous segment. If this is true, then it knows that it found a good P in the Q. That's, that's the basic idea of this algorithm.